Good morning again. I mean, I, I'm definitely putting out these videos, so I apologize for so many videos. Uh, there's so much to talk to you about, especially in the world of health, and yet some of it's pretty redundant. But I've been asked several questions, and uh, I, I feel that, you know, we'll put, keep putting these videos together, because with each one, maybe I'll add things that I forgot or didn't put in the other videos, because I never planned what I'm going to say on these videos, nor any of my lectures. Um, I, I, I'm pretty much letting God flow through me when I talk because I, I want to make sure I reach every one of you. And if I'm trying to tell you what I want, then uh, I just get my ego in the way. So uh, forgive me about that. Uh, I want to do one on HIV and AIDS. Um, uh, this is really connected to virals, but I kind of want to scan the di the difference between bacterium, viruses, and uh, and funguses, which is the candida and moles and warts and things like that. In asking whether HIV or AIDS is curable, there's nothing that's not. Even my sister, who is a naturopath. Uh, had a young man cured of his AIDS within three months. Uh, I had a little baby from, uh, uh, it wasn't the Philly, it was Indonesia, and uh, two uh, missionary couple had adopted her and found that she had had AIDS. So we had cleaned the AIDS out of her and uh, there was, they were over back over in Indonesia and some kind of epidemic over there, I forgot what it was, and their little girl didn't get anything where everybody was dying and catching everything. And the Minister of Health asked her, what, you know, what's, how come her little daughter's so healthy? And she was telling him, and he wanted to give her a bunch of property to build a healing center on. So this is the kind of thing. No one should ever die of AIDS. Um, you know, so let's take a look at this. To understand viruses, I want to first always, always go back to the lymphatic system because the lymphatic system is the culturing medium. That's your culturing medium because, you know, when they, they, when they want to culture bacteria, they'll take a swab, you know, and they do it of the mucosa. That's because that, that is the lymph system. And the lymph system is the body sewer system and main immune system. This is where all the garbage goes. Even the blood dumps what it wants into the kit, into the sewer system. You know, again, the failing of the allopathic community is not understanding the lymph system, and yet it's the predominant fluid of the body. And this uh, ridiculous concept that the venous system uh, takes care of the sewage of the body is ridiculous. That'd be like pooping in your kitchen, pretty much mixing your stool in with your food. Because even though the venous system is coming back, it still has goodies in it. So it, it's ridiculous to even think that. I can't imagine how that idea got started. So understanding that the body's lymph system is the sewer system, and that's where the problem is. And that that system deals with the corrosive side of chemistry or the acid side of chemistry is real important. So I know you've seen enough of these that you guys are getting that pretty good. So let's look at the role of a virus. A virus is like an antigen. I want you to think about uh, nature and various laws of nature. And there's one law of nature I think that's indisputable and that you see it on all these National Geographic and Discover channels. And this law is simple. The strong survive, the weaker consumed. Well, that's obvious because we see this all the time. If you're a big mama bear and you have a weak, sickly cub, some, somebody, some probably big old bear is going to kill it. And this is true in all life. It's hard to get your healthy babies to survive in nature, let alone the sickly ones. So real important to understand this law. If you're a mama bird and you have a nest of beautiful babies and one of them sickly, it goes right out the nest. Man hasn't learned that because man, it, the, our religions have failed man greatly. And uh, your religion needs to turn you on with the experience of God and understanding who you are. 
And I think a lot of people still think they're the body when they got, must realize that you're the soul. You, you don't, you, the body's just a bunch of cells. Each does have its own intelligence. All life is intelligent. But you can't kill anything, really. It only appears that way at this level. You can't hurt anybody a soul. They just pop out and off they go. Nature, we try to keep our mutated babies. I remember that poor little girl that was born without a face hardly, and she's had almost 30 surgeries. I think she's 12 or 13. She'll never be right. If I was that soul in that body, you should have let me go so I can get another body. Why keep me entangled in a body that, that's horrible and, and I don't have any life? I'm the soul. I'm the one experiencing. So nature doesn't do that. Nature gets rid of the bodies so so soul can go on and re-experience things, you know. But we, we, our spirituality is somewhat messed up here. So the big issue here is you must apply that law. The strong survive and the weak are consumed cellularly. You've got a hundred trillion cells that comprise this human body and they're like little people. And if they're weak, your immune system, your immune cells, are the bad boys. They're designed to terminate those cells. What about that? Now, I don't know at what level of magnetic frequency that cells are terminated versus cells that live and can be rebuilt. I don't know that. In today's world, we should be more Star trek -y where we have more of a frequency understanding, like Dr. Reif was giving an indication. His downfall was he was blaming cancer on bacterias and, and virals and things. These are the effects. These are nature's little important creatures, and we kill them without understanding the reason. Now, virals are proteins, really. Still a little consciousness there, but they're not single-celled organisms like bacterium. So a big difference here. So when the body, body has to have a way to terminate cells that are damaged, and viruses do quite well with that. You can have HIV with no AIDS, but you can have hep C with truly no hepatitis. Meaning that if your liver isn't inflamed, isn't being chewed up by acids, you can carry a viral load. But if acids start breaking down liver cells, they're going to, you're going to have adhesion. You're going to have an immune response. It isn't an autoimmune problem. It's your body doing its job. Because cells have to be terminated so they can be replaced. Very important. It's, you would do that when you buy a house and you wanted to turn it over. You would go in and maybe put a new roof on it and tear out all the old rotten wood or whatever and rebuild it. That's how we do things. We get rid of the old and replace it with the new. And so does your body's constantly doing that. Especially if you're highly acidic, you're damaging cells, you see a lot of this uh, catabolic anabolic process kind of going in that way. Now, if you're breaking down cells in the body, this is where HIV can become a reality and breaking down in the body's effort uh, through the immune system to terminate these cells. You can see this in, in blood work. Get yourself a microscope and, or find one. Take a little drop of your blood, put it on a slide, and put it on that microscope. And you will see blood cells in your blood. And as these blood cells start to die, they lose their magnetic energy. Your magnetic energy is your shield of protection. The higher consciousness you have, the greater shield of protection you have. It's the same way with the cells. And so you notice the weak doesn't have a high auric field. They have a darker auric field. They have holes in their auric field. And of course then, you, then magnetics come and attach to that. This is all kind of magnetism, if you will.